should probably close that door. Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and I'm one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. A little bit of a different angle view happening here. If you watched Sunday's question video, you would have seen me mention really quickly that I had to like move all of my books out of my room because we are having our floors redone. So I like transported all of my books basically to another room and I'm using that to film in currently, which is working out pretty well. But that's not the point of this video. <laughs> So it is the final week before Book Riot Live. I'm so excited. Wallace was talking about this in Monday's video. We are all super amped up because we have some really great just like panels and guests and stuff happening this weekend. So I'm super, super excited. Hopefully we will be seeing lots of you guys there. As always, there's a link down below if you are interested in coming still if you live relatively close by to New York City. You can still pick up a ticket. You can come for just one day if that's all you have time for. It's going to be really, really great. So for my final author spotlight that I'm going to be doing this week, I'm going to be talking about Patrick Phillips. Patrick Phillips hasn't written like a significant number of books like Walter Mosley who I talked about last week, but he has written about really interesting topics and written things that I don't normally read or talk about here on this channel, so that's why I kind of wanted to highlight him. Like I mentioned before, there are a bunch of different authors who are going to be a book I live and I wish I could have had time to talk about all of them, but I didn't. So I went for someone who has some books and topics and things that are different than what I've talked about previously. His first couple of books that he had published were all collections of poetry. Now I'm not someone who reads a lot of poetry, I'm not super like well versed in the poetry world, so this was definitely a new venture for me, but it's something that I always really appreciate when authors sort of force me to break out of my own comfort zone. It's probably best well known collection of poetry, at least as well known as a collection of poetry can be, is Allergy for a Broken Machine. This one was actually shortlisted for a National Book Award when it came out last year. Obviously poetry collections talk about a bunch of different themes just like short story collections, but the main idea about this book is dealing with his like father's death and him just like ruminating on life and growing up, especially as he looks at his own uh, son and children, I don't know if he has more than one child, growing up and reflecting on all of those different ideas and themes. This is a pretty slim little volume here, but poems in here are really really moving but since I'm not like super well versed in poetry I feel really unqualified to talk about this a whole lot so this will probably be better for someone who knows more about poetry to actually investigate themselves. The book that he recently had published is Blood at the Root, A Racial Cleansing in America. Um, this was just published in September of this year I believe and it was just nominated or shortlisted for the Andrew Carnegie Award by the American Library Association, I believe that's the right one. This is a nonfiction book where Patrick Phillips looks at this town where he grew up called Forsyth, Georgia. Back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, this town was one that was heavily populated by blacks. And then there was this rape and murder of this young white woman that happened around 1912. The people in that area accused a handful of black men uh, doing this crime and that was sort of just like the catalyst that started off this whole just arson and lynching and just racial cleansing that happened in this town and then after that point forward the town stayed entirely white. So Patrick Phillip talks about how he was born in Atlanta and moved to Forsyth, Georgia at some point in time and how he could recognize immediately that there was something different just because of the fact of how everyone there sort of talked about black people, talked about just race in general in that town when he was growing up, but it didn't really click for him until later on in his life when he had gone off to college and grown up a little bit and he sort of realized what was actually happening in his town. So he decides to do some research into this crime and these trials and the events that occurred over this couple of years that led to this town becoming an all-white town and how they were able to stay an all-white town. This book is really brutal to read and to go through, partially just because Patrick Phillips includes photographs in here of like black people being hung from trees, which is just so heartbreaking. Like there are no words to describe the feeling that you get when you turn the page and you see those photographs. When you read the stories of these people who have such strong fears about black people and the things that they're willing to do to sort of confirm their own fears and to confirm their own biases and then how they react in those situations is just really intense and also just really shows how our own prejudices influence the way that we view other people and view the world and things like that. 
Patrick Philip, I do have to say, is a white man himself. He does take it from the point of view of like how could there be so many white people who have the strong of an opinion and how does this happen in this world and things like that. So do keep that in mind when you're reading this book, but I think that he does a really great job of sort of, I don't want to say sympathizing with the people that lived in this town, but he works really hard to try to get into their mindset and to try to understand where they're coming from and why they did these things. And I think that it provides a lot of really great perspective into race relations and racial injustices and just how if you don't question things they're just going to stay the same and things like that. He does a lot of really deep and intensive research into the trials of things that were said, how black people were treated during this time period like when they were looking for someone to confess they would tie a rope around them and do these sort of like mock lynchings to threaten them to get them to confess and when they went to trial they would just say that the person confessed without saying the circumstances around which they had confessed things like that so it's really really fascinating I highly recommend it obviously like I said do go into it knowing that there are really heartbreaking photographs in here because I wasn't warned of that beforehand and I just like turned the page and was so thrown off. So yeah, but I think that this is a really crucial read, especially during this point in America that seems to be so tumultuous. So yeah, that is a really quick overview on Patrick Phillips's work. If you've read any of these books or any of his poetry collections or anything like that, definitely leave a comment down below. I'm actually going to be moderating a panel that he's going to be on, which is another reason why I was reading some of his books. So I will leave a link to the Book Riot Live schedule so you can see which panel that I'm going to be on. So if you are going to be at Book Riot Live, we'd love to have you there. But yeah, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching.